just needed some bread. That's a castle. That absolutely is a castle. I would say a man's castle. So we're at the Warwick Castle. Yeah. Which, there was never really an actual battle or a siege of this no, castle, no, no. but it- Not during the wars. But they, they played an integral part politically. Yeah. As far as, you know, who owned this. It was owned by Richard Neville, who was the Earl of Warwick. Uh, and he also has been called the Kingmaker by the Victorians. But uh, he was really, one of the key figures who, who sort of started the whole thing. Uh, he supported the Yorkists at the beginning with Ab Edward, and then later on he switched sides to the Lancastrians to, uh, because he was, he was not happy with how Edward was handling things. And then this version of the game, we're actually not going to have this castle in no, our game. No. But the castle we, did, we are going to have in the game isn't, it's not as well preserved as this, so we've actually come here because we wanted to get as accurate as possible uh, you know, representation of what a castle at that time would have looked like. Now we always think about everyone on the battlefields in the 15th century wearing complete armour of plate. If you look at the artistic representations, that's what you see. But that's just not true. Um, when you look at the more detailed records, you find that the vast majority of archers and billmen on both sides, where there is any evidence, had hardly any protection at all. And sometimes the protection they had isn't what you think. Our most complete plate armours for the men-at-arms have a helmet called a sallet, and we know what that's like, wonderful visored thing where, worn with a bevor, which fits onto your plate defences. But this is a sallet as well. This is a very simple, relatively crudely made skull cap, but you still call it a sallet. And this is the kind of thing that the really well-equipped archer or billman was wearing in the middle of the um, 15th century. Originally, the armour was left black like this because it's more resilient to the weather conditions up here in North Europe. We have winter, we have rain, it's always damp. And armour, uh, iron wants to go rusty as soon as it possibly can. And having this nice solid oxide layer on it protects it, prevents it from going rusty. But the idea that armour ought to be bright and shiny comes in with um, the Gothic Revival in the late 18th and early 19th century. There's a lot of debate why the Wars of the Roses were so brutal and bloody. Um, a lot of the remains, they don't seem to have just been given one blow to the head, for instance, but often many, many blows. In fact, some of them had their whole faces obliterated. Um, there are cases of what can only be just mutilation, ear cutting off, even trophy, uh, it implies that trophy getting. Um, it's not very, very pleasant at all. This sword is a, a hand and a half sword. It's a different type of medieval sword. It's called a hand and a half sword. It's also called a bastard sword. Um, quite simply, it was a sword that could be used with two hands, like a two-hander, to deliver a more powerful blow. Obviously, the main purpose of a sword is, 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 is its blade. That's the main yeah. part, and, and that's what you will use. Uh, it can be used for, to strike with and give cutting blows, obviously, with these, these edges. On this sword, it's, it's double-edged. But also, of course, you can thrust with it. This is, this is quite a, a thick blade, as you can see, and it comes to a point, and that will can be used to, to seek out any gaps in, in, in an armour. You were bringing some short hafted staff weapons. One is the mace, which is this one, and the other is a horseman's hammer. 
But as you can see, it's got this hammer head, um, which is faceted, which means if it comes into contact with the smooth surface of a, of a plate armor, it's, it's going to grasp, it's not going to slide off. Then the other thing is if it is, if you meet an unarmored opponent, um, you can basically just whack them with that. And the result can be seen here on the type of wound that a, a spike like this can give. I was quite stunned, I mean, to actually get to touch these swords and, and to actually wield one in your hand and, and to see that and to find these nuanced additions to the weapons that we would have never ever known about, like how they, they used it to protect their finger because they actually started holding the swords more like a, a fencing foil to, to better wield it and to be more accurate with their, their attacks. Yeah, and, and I mean the lightness of everything, it, it was, I was totally convinced they were all like a solid metal or wood <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I <laughs> weighed like five kilos or something. The sheer engineering of this was just unbelievable. Yeah, but I mean, either it worked or you die. I need to fix my hair after the helmet. Medieval knights, the knights back then, had a sense of humor. So they shaped it like their balls. Bullock. It's a bullock dagger. And that's where you get the term bullocks. Mm -hmm.